I'm Edie Lash and I'm here in the Hub Pavilion in Davos and I'm very pleased to be joined by Superchai. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, you run the, the development, trade and development arm of the United Nations. Right. The theme here in Davos is the great transformation. I wonder yes. what that means for you. Well, it means for the UN that uh, we're learning from the past crisis. And so the first thing that uh, we are trying to do is to try to prevent uh, the world from uh, falling back uh, times and again into the crisis. And so we would like to see a more balanced role uh, between uh, the states and the, and the market, uh, as we've seen that uh, markets when left alone during times of crisis could not be trusted uh, to carry out the full adjustment. So the first transformation that we're seeing is that we need to find a balanced role for the state uh, to be involved in, in guiding economies and uh, sometime in rescuing uh, uh, some of the, uh, the, the needed uh, uh, institutions. Second one is for the UN of high priority is how to deal with the uh, uh, question of climate change, what we call it now, to transform uh, global economy into green economy. So mm -hmm. uh, this is going to be part of our Rio Plus 20 meeting uh, in Rio de Janeiro mm -hmm. in sometime in, uh, in May or June. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and this actually entails uh, not only climate change things, but it's, it, it actually encompasses sustainable development. So it, uh, uh, it will be uh, working in regard uh, to economic development, social development, and also environmental protection. The third one uh, is uh, high on our priority in this transformation in that we will need to tackle food crisis on a more permanent mm -hmm. and, and, and serious basis. So uh, food security, uh, food insecurity uh, has become very high on our priority to trans transform the way uh, the world has been or has not been investing in agriculture enough. And so the fourth one, the last one, is the question of uh, inequality in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a problem of unemployment, jobless growth, problem of social protection, uh, women empowerment, so you know, the whole gamut of inequalities in mm -hmm. uh, income, wealth and uh, opportunities. I wonder if we could just pick one of those. If we picked, yes. for example, food um, yes. and the food crisis, there's been yes. some terrible crises in the last... Oh, yes, yes. Every year now. Every year now. I wonder if you could just point to one and tell me if you think how it could have been averted or how we could do it differently next well, time. Well, you see, just, just to cite an example, um, in the 1980s, uh, ODA, the Official Development Assistant, mm -hmm. uh, at least, uh, I would say, 12% of the ODA used to go into agriculture development meaning for new seats, uh, for water irrigation, uh, for transportation, logistics, things like that. Uh, at present, it's only 3 to 4 percent. So uh, you can see that the way the world has paid lip services to uh, crowded development, food security, but the world is not doing anything in that direction to help. Uh, if you look at the African countries, they among the leaders, uh, let's say something like uh, five or six years ago, the leaders committed to an agreement that at least 10% of their budget will be spent on agriculture. Now, up till now, only maybe two or three countries have done that, maybe mm -hmm. uh, Malawi, maybe Ghana, just mm -hmm. only a few. And so they're not really, really successful. So this is, this is why we have to deal with the food insecurity uh, problems in a, in a global way. First, we have to change the mindset, the way we ask the donors to help in the mm -hmm. uh, mobilization of funds to support. And what we've seen at Lakila G8 meeting, that mm -hmm. was one meeting that they have committed to some funds, but what happens today is that the funds committed on things like this are rarely delivered. Right. So the problem is, is, is just how to, how to cope with the uh, limitation financial constraints mm -hmm. and, and, and to work with some of the uh, food deficit countries so that they can have their own ways of doing things. So, so we are now doing a lot of work in these areas to help these countries to mobilize their own funds also. How do you, make, how do you ensure that people do pay the bills? How do you, how do you make sure that you said you said you'd pay for yeah, that? How, yeah, the, the, what the happens? Of, we, we try. I mean, I thought that um, somewhere before La Killa, there was a food uh, summit in FAO a few years before that, and uh, countries committed to $10 billion, uh, which FAO has been asking for a long, long time, and only $1 billion was delivered only mm -hmm. by the EU, something mm -hmm. like that. So it's, it's very difficult, and, they say, and I think we have to have more understanding of the donors, traditional donors, that uh, it would be very hard for them to cough up you know, some of the money that you used to do. I mean, it, it might be already in the benefits of the global economy if they take care of their own businesses and leave things to, to others to do. So what we are now trying to do uh, is to try to address the issues in a way that we have to wean countries away from being too dependent on aid. 
-hmm. and try to mobilize their own resources or try to have transfer of, uh, uh, of in-kind assistant uh, technology and seeds that could be researched somewhere else in Asia mm -hmm. or United States to countries that need them in, in, in Africa, for example. Thank you so much. We don't have time for any more, but I really thank you for coming into the Hub Pavilion here in Davos mm -hmm. and giving us a little bit of your insight. Pleasure thank you so much, Subhachai. I'm Edie Lush.